Right now at noon, a fire causes patrons to evacuate a hotel in Joplin. And we've got some scattered showers and even a couple of thunderstorms out there. We'll talk about how long these are going to last and about this cool weather coming up. Plus, the Shoal Creek Conservation Center hosts a native plant sale. The four states most watched news starts now. A pickup overturns in a crash south of Joplin and the driver leaves the scene. This is KOM News at noon. I'm Elise Snowy. It happened yesterday afternoon along Gum Road in Newton County, east of Missouri 43. Now, the pickup was traveling east when it left the roadway, taking out fence posts, then rammed a driveway overturning. Upon arrival, authorities could not find the driver. MSHP is investigating the crash. Well, patrons at the Best West Stern in Joplin had to vacate their rooms after a fire was reported. It happened Saturday night as smoke could be seen coming from the top of an exterior open air stairwell. The smoke and fire got into the south side of the roof near the stairwell, but it was put out quickly by Joplin Fire. It was determined the fire started in an exterior wall and the fire most likely happened due to discarded smoking materials. There were no reports of injuries. Now let's check in with Chris Warner for a look at the forecast. Yeah, we've had some scattered showers out there, even a couple of rumbles of thunder to go along with that. First, a live look from Modoc Camera 20th and Range Line in Joplin. Folks moving right along, but hopefully doing so carefully because it's been raining. The roads are wet. It is raining currently. And over in Pittsburgh, our camera in downtown Pittsburgh was a light shower earlier. It wasn't actually showing up on the radar, but a few light sprinkles. It's dried out for the moment, but we'll still have some opportunities for some scattered showers out there. You can see the bulk of the heavier rain stretching right along here and then paralleling around running right along I-44 back into Oklahoma and scattered showers across parts of southeastern Kansas. So we've got some heavier rain again almost right along the Will Rogers Turnpike down there between Miami Grove stretching back toward Langley. And then on the Missouri side, we've got some showers. Um, we've had some thunderstorms with this activity. It's kind of eased up again right along I-44 and 49 up toward Carthage, Lamar. And we've got that continuing up around the Stockton area. Some heavier rain getting ready to roll into Osceola, Nevada and Fort Scott. All of this activity still moving off to the north and to the east and as it does so of course additional showers and some thunderstorms continue to develop across Oklahoma and that's what will give us continued chances through the evening started yesterday 67 made it up to 86 and we are going to have highs today relatively close to yesterday's low we're at 64 in both Joplin and Pittsburgh and around the region we've got low mid 60s and down south where there hasn't been as much rain or cloud cover a pinch warmer Anderson Grove into the 70s out there but all in all a uh, very cool day. Showers isolated as we head into the evening hours. They'll become more isolated. Chances dropping off by about 10 o'clock or so down to the low 60s as we head toward 11. We'll have another look at your forecast and talk about some additional rain chances and these nice fall temperatures here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, see you soon. Well, the big brothers, big sisters of Jasper Newton counties teamed up with Butterball and LaFerla Wilson Ortho in Carthage. The event took place at Grace Lanes and lunch was provided for the bigs and their littles. Butterball also provided gift bags for the participants. Today we are having a match activity. So usually our matches will meet in a one-on-one -on -one environment, but uh, quarterly we try to get everyone together and just celebrate uh, the, the, the matches and so that's what we're doing today. We really just know that there are organizations like this out there that have needs, whether the need is a monetary donation or just somebody to step in and shake hands or hand out food. Um, you know, the, it's a nonprofit organization. They're extremely visible in the community. They have a lot of needs. Big Brothers Big Sisters is dedicated to providing trusted adults for children who are in need of a supportive parental figure. Well, the Shoal Creek Conservation Education Center hosted multiple, multiple rather events a Saturday, one of which was a plant sale. Now, two vendors provided over 50 different species and varieties of native Missouri plants. Each plant was also marked with guidelines of how to take care of them. The goal of the sale was to provide native habitat for different pollinators and wildlife. Also fluttering its way to Shoal Creek Saturday was the Monarch Fest. Now the event is held in conjunction with the migration of monarch butterflies to Mexico. Kids could make monarch butterfly head crowns, take part in a scavenger hunt, and participate in the monarch butterfly migration game where they pretend to be butterflies and see if they can make it to Mexico. 
The Lamar Municipal Airport was cleared for landing Saturday morning with an area of pilots dropping in for a fun community event. KOEM's Mitch Adams has the story. I think it's always important to have things to pull our community together. It's a small town. We know each other. It's good to get together and just, just have fun. Lamar Municipal Airport in Lamar, Missouri is home to over 20 plus personal use and business aircraft. A celebration was held to commemorate the 63rd anniversary of the airport. We do uh, expect, I mean the weather has, has uh, delayed uh, our, our start this morning, but we do expect a lot of uh, aircraft to arrive. Um, from from the surrounding areas. Pilots flew in from as far as Little Rock to display their aircraft and participate in the event. This event put on by the Lamar Airport Committee has been in the works for quite some time now. They have been working over a year to, to draw this all all together to produce this big event. One of the main draws at the fly-in was a Black Hawk helicopter. The Army helicopter flew about 45 minutes from Whiteman Air Force Base and landed in front of a crowd of spectators. <laughs> Mayor Rick Olchin told us that another main purpose of the event is to emphasize the importance of the airport to the public. He is being underutilized. Uh, we do have businesses operating out of this airport um, that we didn't have before, and there's a potential here for that to, to grow even farther. The city of Lamar is optimistic about bringing new attention to the formerly underutilized airport, with high hopes that the community's interest will continue to take flight. In Barton County, Missouri, Mitch Adams, KOAM News. The planes weren't the only machines on display in Lamar Saturday morning. A car show with local hot rods took place alongside the fly-in. Well, coming up, elementary school students across Oklahoma will soon have access to an AI reading assistant to improve literacy. And later, we're making Oktoberfest patties in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Elementary school students across Oklahoma will soon have access to an AI reading assistant. It's part of an effort by the state to improve literacy. Ryan Stockett explains. I think it's shown to be effective for Tulsa Public Schools. They've helped me learn, be able to talk better, use better punctuation and grammar. Amira, an AI reading assistant that the Oklahoma State Department of Education announced they're going to implement across the state, is already being used by Tulsa Public Schools. Allison Geary, the principal at Key Elementary in Tulsa, says this software is one of two components in the district's Walk to Read program. The other one is the teacher-led component where students receive small group instruction, where they're grouped with peers at similar reading levels to receive focused attention from teachers. This year we have got more than a third of our students both in math and in reading at a level of proficiency. They were seeing faster growth through students using the program than in previous years. It's using Amira, but it's using Amira with a tutor, with a teacher. So, so it's not, not in isolation. Walters says that even though TPS was already using Amira, they'll still benefit from the state implementing this software. TPS was using the screener side of it, uh, and so now we're gonna, they're going to have access to the curriculum side of it as well. Oh. Walter says that TPS will get access to the resilience learning curriculum on their Amira software, which uses stories from the Book of Virtues. He says another way this implementation will affect Tulsa Public Schools is TPS will no longer have to use their own funds for this program. Teachers in Oklahoma school districts will be walked through on how to use the AI software in the coming weeks. The 25th Festa Italiana kicked off Saturday in Frontenac. Now the Taste of Nations raised money for the Frontenac Public Schools. Over 2,500 people were expected to attend. One of the highlights of Festa Italiana is the Holy Cannoli Competition, where contestants are expected to eat as many cannolis as they can in two minutes. The winner of the contest gets a huge bib with a Festa Italiana logo on it. Um, FESTA provides a $200 scholarship every semester post-graduation for every graduating senior for four years. Um, so each semester they apply to get a scholarship and they're guaranteed $200 if they graduated from Frontenac. And we also um, give student development grants to teachers and provide money for students in Frontenac. Well, FESTA Italiana also showcases foods from other nations, not just Italy. We'll still come on KOAM News at noon, Mr. Food.
Put on your later hose and grab a brewski, because today we're kicking off Oktoberfest in style. God, I love this time. And we've got more rain chances as we head through this week and some very fall-like temperatures. Latest on your forecast when we come back. Welcome back to the KOAM News at Noon. So we've had some scattered showers out there, and as mentioned this morning, it's not an all-day rain everywhere kind of situation, but some locations are receiving a little more continuous rainfall than others, and you can see on the Skywatch Storm Tracker, and what I mean is as we've had storms develop, they've kind of been just kind of tracking right along the I-44 corridor. Now, we've got isolated showers outside of that zone, uh, but the more continuous to steady rains have been uh, right along that I-44 corridor. So let's start, though, in southeast Kansas. So south of Yates Center. We've got a few showers out there heading towards Chanute. Eventually, it'll make their way to Iola, Infredonia, Independence or right now, and then one shower in between Erie and Parsons. We'll head a little closer to the metro, and we've got this line of showers. We've had some thunderstorm activity embedded in here, but Carthage, I-44, just west of Sarcoxie, and then all the way back down into northeastern Oklahoma. Some moderate rainfall in there as well with some of that activity. A little further north, we've got some heavier showers rolling into the Nevada area. We've got some rain on I-49 heading into Bates County up near Butler. We've got rain again in Osceola. You had rain this morning. You've got more on the way. Stockton, same deal. Greenfield, you're getting ready to get in on some shower activity as well. And then you've got this that's coming up, and it's just exiting Jasper and Lamar. Then down into northeastern Oklahoma, that line continues almost, again, paralleling I-44. So rain just leaving Miami, getting ready to kind of skirt parts of Grove and southeast of Vanita, and then stretches all the way back down to Oklahoma and and this is where it's all been coming from. So this morning, we talked about some of those spotty showers that were developing. We've got more and we've got a few more showers and storms as this all continues to build through and lift to the northeast. And so that's going to continue to give us scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area as we head through the afternoon. So here we are at 2. We go a little later in the evening by about 5. The bulk of the heavy rain again is exiting the area by the uh, early evening hours, late afternoon, early evening. But we could have an isolated shower or two that might redevelop back behind this before the rest of this system really starts to clear out. Tuesday, we're going to start the day mostly cloudy and then in the afternoon, some isolated to widely scattered showers may be possible. And then late evening Tuesday, we might even get a couple of additional thunderstorms in here late uh, Tuesday evening into very early Wednesday morning, and then that activity clears on out of here. And our Wednesday, aside from a few clouds here and there, going to be cool. Still holding on that north breeze. And take a look at those noontime temperatures, mid 60s out there. It will eventually warm, but not significantly. It's going to be relatively pleasant out there. A little dreary now, but again, we need this rain, so we will take it. 64 in Joplin, we've got those showers. South breeze at about five miles an hour. Over in Pittsburgh, if you look close enough, we've been seeing it off and on. There's been some hit and miss showers out there. Not showing up on the radar, but we have been getting some sprinkles. Otherwise, obviously cloudy and 65. Here's where it's not been nearly as rainy or cloudy, so a little warmer off to our south and east. We've got a couple of low 70s, Grove, Anderson, and Bentonville. The rest of us low to mid 60s, and we're not really going to do a lot of warming today. On average, we're looking at highs about 69, maybe 70 degrees with those scattered storms out there. And then as we head into this evening, again, those storms will come to an end. We'll be mostly cloudy and cool, mid 50s. Northwest breeze around 5 to 10 miles an hour. And then we head into to our Tuesday. We have that opportunity again, isolated showers, maybe some late evening uh, scattered thunderstorms. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies, a pinch warmer right about the mid 70s. And as we look down the road, the 70s are all that we see on the long range forecast. That does warm up upper 70s for us on our Wednesday. And then we've got additional shower and thunderstorm chances as we head into the upcoming weekend. So again, no severe weather today. We're not looking at any severe weather this weekend, but we'll keep an eye on that for you. And otherwise, those temperatures staying quite nice out there, hanging on to the 70s. Not bad. And we're getting yeah. some much needed rain around the area yes, as well. Yes, we really need that. All right. Thanks, Chris. We'll stick around. We're making Oktoberfest patties in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. We'll be right back. Well, Howard is showing us how to make Oktoberfest patties in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If you've been hearing a lot about Oktoberfest and you're a bit confused, since it's not even October yet, you're not alone. You see, Oktoberfest in Germany usually starts around the middle of September and runs for about three weeks. Well, here in the States, we celebrate it in October. So to celebrate it at home this year, 
rather than in a crowded bar or restaurant, I thought it'd be fun to make a German classic, as well as to dress the part. We start off by combining ground beef and pork with some caraway seeds, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. After it's mixed, we form it into oval patties, then coat them with some breadcrumbs before sauteing them until they're cooked through. Once they are, we take them out of the pan and add in some mushrooms and brown gravy. While this simmers, you can heat up some spatzel and red cabbage to round out the meal. Come dinner time, simply smother the patties with the mushroom gravy and dig in, cause each bite will make you feel like you're at Oktoberfest. To get the recipe for our Oktoberfest patties, all you have to do is go online now. It's that easy. I'm Howard with Fraulein Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fun and festive way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. You can of course find this recipe along with a lot more good food from the Mr. Food Test Kitchen online. Just go to our website, that's koamnewsnow.com. Now here's a look at the four state market prices. All right, scattered storms continuing for us today and they'll be coming to an end later this evening and maybe a few isolated showers tomorrow and maybe a couple of late evening thunderstorms. Not a bad Wednesday and more shower and thunderstorm chances Thursday, Friday and Saturday. But the other side of this nice story of needed rain is these pleasant temperatures in the 70s out yeah. there. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Chris. And Dowdy, for us later on. Well, a lot's coming up at five. For starters, a small study of pregnant women found negative emotions correlate Relate to a specific part of the brain. We're going to take a look at how this could help identify which women are most likely at risk for postpartum depression. Plus, OSHA is reevaluating their proposed regulations that would impact fire departments after receiving feedback about how it would impact volunteer fire departments. We're going to hear from the Galesburg Volunteer Fire Department about these proposed regulations. And Native American organizations joined together in Oklahoma to encourage Native Americans to register and vote for the upcoming election cycle. Hope you'll join us for those stories. A lot more, of course, it's coming up on KOAM News at 5. Absolutely. Thank you, Dow. And that's the news for now. Thank you for joining us on KOAM News at noon. We'll see you right back here at 5. Until then, have a great rest of your day.